Now we're ready to actually do some coding. So let's go ahead and get started. We are doing the model view controller paradigm and so let's start by creating our first model. Uh, we're going to generate using Rails a model and we'll just call it user and um, we need to tell Rails what the attributes of this model are. Um, cool thing about Rails is we don't have to know that up front. We just need to know as much as, as we can right now and we'll be able to add more attributes later. So if we don't know exactly what our user should look like, that's okay. We can update it later. Uh, one thing that we probably do know is our user is going to have a name and they're going to have an email. And <coughs> Uh, let's, let's give them a password to start off here. So let's go ahead and generate that model. Now what we can see is Rails is going to create some files automatically for us and those files will allow us to be able to create a database with that type of a model, uh, have a object that represents that data in the model and creates a initial testing file for that model. Let me go ahead and create the database first. The way that we do that is we go rake db migrate and what that's going to do is that's going to look in this db migrate folder and any of these files that are in that folder that haven't been used to create or update the database will be run. So I'll create that first and then we can look at that while that's running. Let's look at migrate and we can see that this is Ruby code that runs to create that database. And so what it's going to do is it's going to create a users table and it's going to create three attributes, name, email, and password, which are all strings. And notice we didn't have to tell Rails that those were strings because that's the default data type for these values. If we wanted to use something else like a date or an integer, we will see how to do that, but it's really easy to, to tell Rails to go ahead and create those for us. So we go here and we say run that migration. It runs that migration, creates that table for us, and one of the things that Rails will also do for us is we'll edit a, a different file called DB schema. Now this file you should never ever edit. Notice it's auto-generated. But this gives you what Rails thinks your current database looks like. And it's in terms of those similar Ruby instructions that we have a users table, it's got the name, the email password, and then two additional attributes that are date time created at and updated at. And the Rails will automatically add those to, to every table that we have. And so now we know that Rails currently thinks that we have a database with a user's a, a table and that user's table has five attributes, name, email, password, created at and updated at. And so we have a, a model as well that is really easy to look at if we look in app models user we have our user model and notice how simple it is it's just a class user that inherits from the active record base class this is really cool in here we don't specify any of our attributes and the reason why we don't do that is because it is super smart and it looks at our database and says tell me about the users table and the users table will say well I look like this and I'll say well then I'll make myself look like that now how did it know it was the users table because the class is user and what it does is it pluralizes itself from user to users because this is this class will create an object for one user from the table that holds all the users and so that's why we have a difference between singular class plural table in our database. So we have our user class and it's just going to act like our database. So 
if we wanted to, we could go ahead and look at that. So let's run Rails console. Uh, normally I'll type Rails C, but just make it easy right now. And what this does is this starts up the Rails environment, but it and then wraps it around an IRB interface. And we can do something like u equals user dot new, and this will create a new user class. And notice that it automatically expects to have a name, an email, and a password, so that if we store those in the database, it it would work. And so this is is really nice. How did it know those? It looked at the database. So our models will always mirror whatever the database thinks it is. So if we update the database, our models will automatically update themselves as well. And so this is really convenient. So since we're doing test-driven development, the very first thing we should do is, is write a test. And we know that it created a test for us right here, so let's look at that test. Let's edit spec models user spec. And now this is uh, pretty simple. We have our user model and we have this pending which means it's a test that we don't think should pass right now and so we need to put something in here. So uh, let's do it and now what do we know about our, our user model? We know that it uh, expect uh, well we need an instance of a user model so let's create a variable let's do call it let and we're gonna do this that colon user and we're gonna do user dot new just like we did in the console right down here and we're gonna we're gonna use this variable called user to be able to access that user dot new value. And what we would say is expect user to and respond to um, name. And we know that user will respond to name. Notice I didn't give any text here for the it because um, it's kind of self-explanatory. It should uh, ex we, we, we expect the user to respond to a name, which means that the user has a name attribute. Um, and we can do this again with expect user to respond to uh, email and expect our user to respond to password. And what these three lines do is just look for an attribute with that, with the same name as the symbol that's passed in, and check that it works. So let's go ahead and, and save this. And we can run this now uh, by doing, um, it's going to look a little strange. We're going to say bundle exec rspec. And the reason why we want to do this is we want to make sure that we use the rspec that we installed for our Rails application. So bundle exec rspec and it's going to go ahead and run rspec on all the tests that we have so far, all one uh, files with, with three tests and um, it failed. And the reason why it failed is because when we run the tests, we run the tests not in our normal uh, environment where we did the Rails console, but we run it in the test environment. And we only created the database for our development testing, not for our formal testing. So we need to rake db t um, test prepare. What this does is this sets up the testing database separate from our development database. That way when you run a development database you can add things in, use the web interface and, and make sure it all works. And then when you're testing, you're testing with separate data from what you're running. So now we can run our spec again and now be able to say, oh, now you've got that database 
now I can find what the user should look like and we've got our three tests passing uh, like we want. Now is our chance we did our um, red green real quickly um, uh, to do the refactor stage and the refactor that I'm going to do is this it expect to expect user to doesn't read well and it's very repetitive especially as we add more attributes so I'm going to add uh, this subject uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to say that I'm going to assume that user is going to be what I'm testing and so I don't need this expect user anymore uh, expect user to what I can do is I can shorten that to oh, let's uh, do this it should respond to name well what it well this user so it, it reads a little bit nicer and will make it easier to, to write these tests as well so now I've refactored the code in this case the tests to do what I want I save those and I run the tests again and now what I get it hopefully is three passing examples and so this is a very quick setup for um, creating a model setting up the database and the test database and running some tests to to, to pass the next uh, thing that we're going to do is write some tests that weren't automatically set up by our generation and see them fail so now we can actually write some code to work properly.